I'll be making also a further statement at the end of my talk. It's not customary in all adult circles to speak about these topics in public. But being that a rabbi claiming to belong to Orthodox Jews, Rabbi Joseph Dweck, has come out in public and given a 97-minute lecture, the content of which we have found misguided and mistaken, I feel it is my duty to put things right for the sake of the Almighty and our holy tradition. I'm asking the members of the press to act responsibly and with due sensitivity and not to publish any inaccurate, misleading or distorted information. Should you wish to quote from my words, please do so, but always with regard to the context and with utmost care and sensitivity for the subject. Please note we are being recorded. A second statement, which I'm making to the press as well, which is very important for everyone to know tonight. I'm not speaking about any individual cases of people who are struggling in this subject. We appreciate that there are many people who have great struggles, tests, ordeals. The rabbinate and the orthodox rabbinate especially has great compassion and sensitivity and will always look after individual cases and direct them to appropriate professional help. I would like to state from the outset that I have no axe to grind with Rabbi Joseph Dweck. When he was appointed and he came to London approximately two years ago, Two years ago, I looked forward to working with him as a colleague and hoped and prayed that he would come and bring up the Spanish and Portuguese community and maybe I would in some small way be of help to him to do so. He even has spoken previously in our synagogue. We've been invited him on two or three occasions. But I would like to publicly say that I regret it. I know that he probably used it to try and prove his respectability to the English Jewish community. And unfortunately, we were misled. We should have taken note and asked and inquired from America about him. But what's done is done. And now I publicly would like to apologize to the community for having invited him and for having given him the respect as a, as a head minister of the, of the Spanish and Portuguese. We point out that Rabbi Dweck has never publicly retracted from his talk. I won't call it a shiur, even though he calls it a shiur. Elu Dvarim She'enem Shiur. He has never publicly retracted from his talk. and can never, seeing that at the very beginning of his talk, he said that he has been thinking for years and years and years about this subject, and he has never given to any talk that he has given in three years, in the past three years, as much thought as what he gave to this talk. It wasn't something that he said of the, of, the, of the cuff. He just said it off the cuff. It was something that was thought out. It was a plan. And even if he will retract completely 
from every single word of that talk, he is presently being monitored and all his talks which he has given in London, which are all recorded, are at present being monitored and checked out and are found to be inappropriate in many circumstances. I'm not a publicity seeker, and I can proudly say, in the 30 years in the, in the rabbinate, I don't think the Jewish Chronicle has had any occasion to mention my name. I would never be giving this shoe tonight if I did not believe 100% 100% that whatever I'm saying is la mitah shel Torah. This shiur is being heard live in three continents. There's a hookup in America, New York. It's being heard in Israel. And I can guarantee you, I wouldn't be here publicly standing in front of you if what I'm saying to you, I did not believe in 100%, there's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Rabbi Dweck has pulled his talk from the web. I will never remove this talk, this shoe from the web. I was under pressure from various corners to refrain from giving this fuel. Diane Abraham tried to influence me not to give the talk. He even spoke to Chacham Yaakov Hillel in Jerusalem to try and persuade me not to give this talk together with other Dayanim on the different Batei Din. However, I have spoken to Chacham Yaakov Hillel and he has given me his full blessing from what I am about to say. Other people told me that some of you might know we, ha we are currently undergoing a fundraising drive to build a big shul, a better midrash, and a Makom Torah. And perhaps my talk tonight will damage this. I want to say quite clearly and categorically that even if we, do, if we will not be able to, be, to build because of this, it does not deter me in the slightest. Our aim is not to build a building. Our aim is to propagate Torah values, the truth of the Torah. Torah tenu akedosha. As everyone knows, the famous story with the Nitzvah Velozhin. The Rosh Hashiva of the Vilozh of the Yeshiva, which was started by the famous Talmud of the Vilna Gon, of Chaim Velozhina. And the Yeshiva had been running for about 90 years. The Russian government wanted to introduce secular studies into the curriculum of the Yeshiva. Otherwise, the Yeshiva would be closed down. So the Nitziv, he asked the Gadol Adol, the Beis Alevi, the Briskorov, what should he do? 
And the Beis HaLevi said, without any hesitation, close down the yeshiva. We are not the guardians of Hashem's Torah. We are there to stand up for the Torah, but we don't need to protect it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will protect His Torah. Hashem has promised us, Ki lo mi pi zaro. The Torah will never be forgotten. That's Hashem's business. Our business is to propagate the Torah in the right fashion. If we can't do that, we close down the yeshiva. And that's what they did. Rabbi Joseph Dweck has said to the papers in Israel and it's been published that no other Rav or Dayan in London is against him, only Rabbi Basus and he's acting totally on his own. I can assure him that if he hangs around much longer, there won't be any Rav or Dayan who is not against him. And I want to know that the bulk of the rabbinic opinion in this country is on my side. My colleagues in the Northwest London Rabbinate, the Saul Mayor Greenberg, of Shimon Weingarten, of Moshe Halpern, have all s- spoken to me very strongly, given me their best wishes for Hatzlacha. In America, Rabbi Eli Mansu from the Syrian community of New York, has come out publicly in a shiur which he gave last Friday decrying the talk of Rabbi Dweck and saying publicly that it did not come as any surprise to him as he had known Rabbi Dweck's false ideas from when he was in America. And I would like to inform the Kala Kadosh, a letter has already been signed coming out against Rabbi Dweck and his philosophies and his false ideas and, and, and talks which are next against the Ashkafot of the Torah and the Bnei Yeshiva. Signed by the great Syrian rabbis of Brooklyn, Rabbi Eli Mansour, Rabbi Ozeri, Rabbi Yedid, Rabbi Yaakov ben Chaim, and Rabbi Shaul Kassin. At present, that letter is sitting at the desk of the chief rabbi, Rabbi Yitzchak Yosef, in Jerusalem, and is waiting for his signature before it's published. A rabbi who is cowed into not speaking publicly about something that he feels is the truth is not a rabbi. The first halakha of a dayan, lo taguru mipnei ish, do not be frightened from any man.
We mustn't hold back our words. Lot gold ish. We have to say the Torah truths without any worry and any considerations. We are not Sichon Mele Cheshbon, making Cheshbonot about what we have to say and what we don't say, and why we should say and why we shouldn't say. Our only Cheshbon should be to do the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to speak the truth of the Torah Tzeinu HaKedoshah. Throughout our history, the Umot HaOlam had tried through torture and burnings to beat the truth out of us and they haven't succeeded. I would like to remind the great rabbis of London the words of the Ramban in Parsha Kitavo on the Pasuk Arur Asher lo yakim et zot la asot otam Curse is the person who doesn't uphold the words of the Torah and the Ramban explains in the name of the Yerushalmi. Afilu kara v'shana lamad v'limed v'ya b'yado l'achzik v'lo achzik karu b'chlal aru. Even a person learnt, he studied, he taught Torah, but he had the possibility to strengthen the Torah to come to the support of the Torah, and he didn't, he is cursed. When Eliyahu Navi was in Har Kaumel, he said, Vani, notati nevi Hashem levadi. I'm the only one to speak out the word of Hashem. The Torah's voice does not go according to the numbers. It's a cold de mamadaka, the silent truth. That everyone knows in their hearts. And even though there was at that time 100 Nevi'im which had been hidden by Ovadia, Eliyahu Navi said, Ani notati levadi Nevi Hashem, I'm the only one. Where were all those hundred? They were all in hiding. They were all scared to open their mouths. I have shed many tears in the course of listening to the talk of Rabbi Dweck and in preparing the shield which I'm giving tonight. On the Chilul HaTorah, Chilul Kvod Chachamim, Chilul Kvod Am HaKodesh. Please forgive me if I get emotional. Shalom Aleichem and Moshe Halpen. I've learned a very big message. I've learned great lekach of the last few days. Who are the rabbis who are concerned for Kvot Shemaim 
and who, are, who and for whom is it business as usual? I want to say, la new dati, a new pshat in the pasuk in Malachi. The shav temuri ten, ben tzaddik le rasha, ben oved Elohim la shelo avado. Malachi Anavi tells us at the end of days, everyone will see the difference between the tzaddik and the rasha. It will become clear who is the tzaddik and who is the rasha. But also we will see who was that who was Oved Elohim whose heart was burning for Kvot Shemaim, who worshipped Hashem, and who was the one who didn't support the Tzaddik, who is the one, Asher Lo Avado, he didn't serve Hashem. He might have served something else, but he wasn't serving Hashem if he didn't support the Tzaddik. Who am I to stand before you tonight? Afani kapot raglechem. Anshe muna abadu. It should be standing in front of you, Bechesk Lebramski Zichron Levrocha. The Gates of Rob Zichron Levrocha. The Mansur of Shiva Zichron Levrocha. Abraham Shol Kaufman Zichron Levrocha. And Matthew Salomon Zalzan Gizint. They would have shouted at this tremendous Chilul Hashem without any shame. But the Peric says, the Makom She'en Anashim Hishtadeliot Ish. In place where there are no men, try you to be a man. So I'm going to try in my humble way, to put forward to you an act which is a shlichot of those great tzaddikim. That I was Zoicha to sit at their feet and to imbibe some of the Yerushalayim. Of Shwam Shvadron, before he used to start speaking, he used to say, I dive into Hashem that I should be a kosher pot. He used to bring a story. That once a muscle came to Brisk and he asked the Rav, the Brisker Rav, if he can speak in public. The Rav said, of course not. How can you speak in public? He said, but Rebbe, whatever I say will be from kosher sources. I'll only quote from the Babanel, the al Kadosh, etc., etc. The Brisker Rav answered him, if you cook kosher food in a tray for pot, it's tray. Whatever I say to you is kosher food. Whatever I say to you, I'm going to give chapter and verse. I dive and I should be a kosher pot. Dvarim ayotzim min alev, ichnasim lalev. I'm going to read out the words which we say on the Yom HaKodesh, the holiest time of the year. Before we start the Seda Vodah, 
היין פיפיות שלוחי עמך בצל העומדים לפניך היום לבקש רחמים בצחנו על עמך ישראל הורה מה שיאמרו הבינה מה שידברו הודיעם מה שישאלו ולקרשנו בלשונם ולבושו במענם ועל יום לפניך דבר שלא כצונח. יהי לרצון מפי, וגיון לבי לפניך אדוני צורי וגואלי. ויהי נועם אדוני אלוהינו עלינו, מעשה ידינו כונן עלינו, מעשה ידינו כוננהו. That was only the introduction. I will start my talk with a few words of Divrei Chizuk, the Krat Chag Matan to Atenu HaKedosha. Yisod HaTorah, the foundation of the Torah is the Yud Gimel Ikrim. The Rambam HaKadosh, he writes in his introduction to Perik Chelek in Sanhedrin, some people say every day. And amongst the Yud Gimelit Ikrim it's written, Shea Torah nituna min ha-shamayim Yishilo tishtaneh b'shum zman Toratzeinu ha-kedosha does not change. It doesn't reform to fit into our lifestyles. We have to reform ourselves to fit into what the Torah Tainu HaKedoshah says. As the Lubavitcher Rebbe Zichroin Levroch has said, we have to be Kovea Itzim La Torah. We have to make the times fit into the Torah. Velo HaTorah Le'itim. We don't have to make the Torah fit into the times. Rashi HaKadosh says in the Pasuk in Kriya Shema Ve'ayu ha'devarim ha'ele Asher anuchi mitzavecha hayom alev avecha Why does he say hayom? Was these words said at the end when the Yidin were at the end of the Midbar these were said in Matan Torah Says Rashi, Lo yu be'necha kidyut kemach ha'yeshana shen adam sofna, ela kechadasha shakol ratzin likrata. The Torah should not be like something in the old law. No, one's, no one pays attention to it. It's outdated. It should be like something new that everyone runs to hear it. Today the Torah is given. Kabbalat HaTorah is not... Kabbalat HaTorah is not an anniversary. We're not commemorating something which happened over 2,000 years ago. The Torah is as fresh today as it was at the time of Matan Torah. When we stand early morning, on Shavuot morning, and we hear that said Hadibrot, it's like we're hearing it in Mama's house Sinai. The Torah is never out of date. You have nowadays some items in the shop, it's got a sell-by date. The Torah has got no sell-by date. This is the difference between Torah Kedosha and Sicha Betela Shalahem. The mayor, the holy town of Mayor Balanes, 
He was a sofer. And he said, If we add one letter to the Torah, or we subtract one letter from the Torah, we are destroying the world. Torah Tashem Temima Meshivat Nafesh. The Torah is perfect. It doesn't need us to add to it. And it doesn't need us to subtract from it. Ele Adevarim Ashit Daber Bene Israel Zok Rashi. Lo Pachot, Belo Yotel. I want to read out to you the words of Chief Rabbi Lord Sachs, which I couldn't agree with more, which he says about this subject. It need hardly be said that there are few aspects of Judaism more out of step with today's radically individualist culture than its view of this subject. That, however, has always been the fate of one or other elements of Jewish life. To be a Jew has always involved being willing to challenge the idols of the age, whatever idols, whatever age. One of the idols of our time is the idea of the sovereign self, navigating the world with no binding commitments beyond personal inclination and private desire. Today's secular culture resists the idea there may be boundaries to the life we may legitimately pursue. It finds it difficult to understand that the logic of I ought is quite different to that of I feel or I want. At such times, Judaism's ethics become countercultural. To live by the call of the Torah is not an easy undertaking. At times, it is little short of heroic. We don't have to look around us to the nations of the world to learn from them how to behave. When the nations of the world were primitive people, the Jewish nation, the Am Hashem, we had already received the Torah. The values of the nations of the world, they change according to the fashion, according to the whims of human ideas. Tu'ateinu HaKedosha is the will of Hashem Barach. Being so doesn't need to be changed and will never be changed. We don't need to be influenced by the culture of our surroundings. We need to lead the culture. We are the Mamlechet Kohanim Begoy Kadosh. We are a light to the nations. We have to lead the way. We have to show by example how Jewish family, the Kedusha, how we bring up our children. I remember very clearly the Chorin of Rochem sent the first time. He once said to us in a, in a speech, he said he was the headmaster of Sodat Torah in Stanford Hill. And he said, you know, they get visits by the police to teach them uh, various things about road crossing and things like that. He said, you know, when the police came to the school, they asked him, as the headmaster of a Jewish school, he said, Rabbi, can you tell us why there's very little child delinquents, children who are delinquents, in the Jewish community. He said, I'll tell you why. Can you tell me how many police are in the force? Are you, are, have you got enough staff? He said, no, we're sorry, we're always understaffed. 
So he said, that's the difference. By you, if a person is being watched by the police, he'll be careful. But if he's not watched, he thinks he can get away with it. With us, our police is always watching us. Says in the parak, Ben Bag Bag Omer, Hafoch Ba Ba Foch Ba De Kule Ba Ba Tehze Visivu Vle Ba Minad La Tazua Shelecha Midat Sova Emena. Ben Bag Bag said, Turn over the Torah and turn over the Torah. If you don't understand it the first time, look again. De Kule Ba, everything is in it. Uba techeze, to the Torah you will see. The seed of Leibah, even in your old age, learn it. Uminala tazua, never leave it. She'en lecha midah tova imena, we have nothing better than the Torah, Torah ten wa kedosha. It's the best thing we've got. It's the most precious thing that we have. I want to point out a small chidush that I was zoche to make this week with Chut Who is this Ben Bag Bag? It's a strange name, isn't it? Does anyone know? Tosfa Yom Tov says he was a girl. Girl Tzedek. He was a convert. He was called Ben Bag Bag because Bed Gimel is hay. And Bed Gimel again is another hey, and he accepts upon himself the Ten Commandments. Hey, Bey. The parent brings this statement in the name of a Ger Tzedek. A God, he has to tell us, you know something? The Torah is the best thing. The Torah is the best Sechoyra. Why a God? Because a God, he's been out in the world. He's seen other things. He's seen other, other types of lives. And now he sees the Torah and he can testify. The parent brings in the name of a goy. Ben Bag Bag Omer. The goy has to come to teach us. To tell us. You know something you didn't? You've got the best thing. Don't leave it. Today is Dalit Sivan. On this day, Kashbogh gave us two mitzvot in Har Sinai. The first one, Heyu nechonim l'shloshet yamim atig Yeshua l'isha. Be prepared in three days' time. Don't be together with your wives. And the second one, to make a border around Hasinai. No one should go up the mountain. Why does these two mitzvot before Matan Torah? The way I understand it is as follows. There's two things we have to learn, we have to know, in our approach to Torah Tenu Kedoshan. <coughs> the first thing is, Al Tigeshu We have to learn and we have to know Torah Tenu Kedoshan is not like a secular law. It's removed from any Kedoshan. For many holiness. Tatin Akedosha is holy. And he has to be approached with holiness. There's many laws. How we have to behave when the Sefer Torah is out, when the Echal is open, when we're sitting down in front of the holy books and they're open. Kavot Sefarim. Every
Ezra so thirty ken that we shouldn't learn Torah or to pray without going to the mikveh after we've been with our wives. Takanat Ezra. In order that our learning should be Bigdusha Tahara. And even though nowadays the Shokhanok says that we are allowed to, because the Chachamim found it was too difficult to be able to upkeep this law. But the Rambam is quoted by Rabbeinu Yonah in Brachot Perich Lishi. That the Rashi Yeshivot Shebevavet Tamu Alav. The great rabbis in the yeshiva in Babel, they asked the Rambam, they inquired, they were wondering, Lama ya mekel kol kach binyan tzvilat baal keri? Why in the Rambam and his sefer is so lenient about tzvilat baal keri? He says, we don't need to do it nowadays. And the Rambam answered them, Vue shiv lahem, Shemiyamav lo bitzel ota afidu shahat. In his life, in his personal life, he never ever refrained, even once, from going to mikveh in the morning before he learned Torah. But well, he wrote in his, in his sefer, was what he wrote to Kunta Alakha. In his personal life, Rambam, the Holy Rambam, He learned Torah Bigdusha. That is the first, the first thing that Akadzbohu told us before Matan Torah on this day. The Torah is not something which is profane. It's something which is holy. We have to treat it with holiness. We have to treat it with respect. The second thing is. We have to know our limits. We have to know our borders. We have to know how far we can become close and how far we can't become close anymore. Even though we learn from the great Chachamim, we cannot be their buddies. We have to know there's a Gavul. And if you cross the Gavul, it's dangerous. As the Perek says, Warm yourself by the fire of the Chachamim. But be careful, don't come too close, otherwise you might get burnt. <coughs> you know why it says three times? The words of our rabbis of the Talmud of the great Rishonim, of the great Achronim, we can learn their words, but we have to treat them with trepidation. We have to always remember the Imam of the Gemara. Ima Rishonim ke Malachim, Atem Adam. 
אבל עם השונים, כבני אדם, אנחנו כחמורים. If the early ones, in your eyes are like malachim, like angels, then you can be called a human being. But if you treat them like human beings, then you are a donkey. The famous story, Yaakov Kamenetsky, Zecholim Devrocha, is once on the plane. He's once on the plane. And in the course of the journey, it was a very long journey, his children came to him, Daddy, can we offer you something? Do you need anything? Can we give you a drink? And he was sitting on the other side of the aisle, a professor, an Israeli professor. After some time, as the journey carried on, he couldn't restrain himself and he asked Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, he said, he said, Rabbi, I don't get it. Who are all these people looking after you? Why are they giving you such treatment? He said, they're my children. He said, what, your children? They respect you? He said, my children, I'm a professor, my children, I don't see them, they're not, they're not in touch with me, they don't care too, it's about me. What's the difference? So he said, Rabbi Akhvinet told him, I'll tell you the difference. You believe that you come from apes. You're descended from apes. And now you became a human being. So the further you go down the line, the more developed you become. So your children look to you as a, as a, as a, as a small monkey. We don't believe like that. We believe. Arishonim wa malachim. They were the tzaddikim. They were the chachamim. They were the righteous people. They were malachim. They is their idat hadorot. We're going down. The generations are descending. So my children... They look up to me, because I'm one closer to the Malachim. <coughs> so that is what we have to think about at this time. When we come, two days time, the Holy Yom Tov, we have to renew our vows with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. את אדוני אמרת היום, ואדוני אמירך היום. השם has promised us, He will never forsake the Jewish people. And we promised Hashem, we will never forsake His laws, His Torah. I'm now going to speak about the talk which was given two weeks ago by Rabbi Joseph Dweck. And at the outset, I would like to say the following. I challenge any Rav in the whole world, I repeat, I challenge any Rav in the whole world to come out publicly with a signed letter of support for the talk which Rabbi Dweck gave. Rabbi Dweck is very well connected. His wife is the granddaughter Chacham Ovadi Yosef, His uncle is the chief rabbi of Israel, Chacham David Yosef, the chief rabbi of Haram Nofi Yushalayim. We haven't yet seen a letter signed by them in, in support saying that they've heard his talk, all 97 minutes of it, and we agree this is a Torah viewpoint. <coughs> I 
I want to read out for you the Torah viewpoint, which I agree with totally. I will read it out to you first and then tell you who said it. I think we should declare in very plain and explicit terms indicating that our society has violated some of the norms of the divine law and of the natural law and that as a consequence we pay a price, an exceedingly heavy price. I need hardly spell out to an informed audience certainly one that is likely to know the rudiments of Jewish teaching, that any form of sexual gratification outside marriage cannot be condoned by Jewish law, whether this is premarital, extramarital, or whether it's altogether, altogether unnatural in the form of Mishkav Zachur. We utterly disapprove of this as an ab abomination. It is treated by biblical law as a moral aberration we cannot come to terms with. Who do you think said that? Chief Rabbi, Lord Emmanuel Jakobowicz, who was, who was elevated to the peerage by, by, the, by the Prime Minister of England, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher, because of his stand for the ethics and morals That is my view, exactly word for word. There's three distinct parts of Rabbi Dweck's talk, which was a hand pushing against the Torah. Number one, Chilula Torah. He profaned the Torah. He gave his own warped interpretations to the words of Torah Tzeinu HaKedoshah. Chilu Kvod Chachamim. He mocked the words of the rabbis in the Talmud. Chilu Kvod Am HaKodesh. He debased the audience that he was speaking to which is the whole world, because it was live, it was, on, it was recorded. I want to start from the beginning. Chilul Kvod Torah. I wrote in my Giludat, Umatsanu shekol devarav heima mesurasim mishubashim mutaim merishitam ad sofam that there, his words are false, misguided, from the beginning to the end. This, what I'm saying, is pshita kebeta bekutcha. It doesn't need a big time chacham to listen to that recording to come to the same conclusion. Any Ben Torah who's got the rudiments of any Jewish learning, any Ben Torah, unfortunately, people nowadays are lacking in basic knowledge of the Torah. And therefore I had to write about it. And we have to speak about it. Because people sent me emails, asked me, Rabbi, we heard the recording. We heard his talk. Can you tell me precisely which words, in your opinion, was against the Torah? And my answer, I didn't give it to them then. But if they're here now in the audience, I'll give it to you now. The whole thing from beginning to end was against Torah Tema Kedosha. And the only reason I need to speak about this is because, unfortunately, we're living in a very low generation. 
people are lacking the basic rudiments and fundamental knowledge of our Torah. I don't know what he thought when he said this recording, when he said this talk. Did he think that everyone is a fool? Did he think no rabbi is going to hear it? Did he think everyone's going to keep quiet in his honor? And I'll tell you why. His whole talk, from, from the first word to the last word, is all Hebech Torah. Ba'ayot is chamurot shebachamurot. In Jewish life, this parsha is the Yisod. And Mishkav Zachu is chamurot shebachamurot shebachamurot. On the holiest day of the Jewish year, Yom Kodesh, the holiest time of the holiest day, when the whole of the Jewish nation is fasting for 18 hours already, we take out the Sevet Torah Mincha, what do we read? Pashat Arayot. Why? But we all like Malachim. It's the holiest day of the year. We speak about Arayot. Says the Bet Yosef, Maran Rabbi Yosef Karo, Zichonon de Bracha. Now it's Kippur, but in a few short hours, we'll be down to earth. What's ringing in our ears after Kippur? Arayot. The Torah knows we are humans. We are Basar Vadam. We have desires. Nafshor shel Adam it's avelaim. But we have to know we're not animals. Sarich le Kadesh atzmomen. We have to sanctify ourselves. We're Yedim. What did he say? I quote. From the dawn of the society, it has always been practiced. It was completely normal that it should manifest itself in humanity. It has been happening throughout human history. It has been acceptable as part of society until the 1700s. It was not a hang-up. The Torah has very little to say about it. The act is forbidden and nothing else. That's how he started. And how did he finish? As was quoted in the Jewish Chronicle last week. Not my quote. I am the Jewish Chronicle.
I genuinely believe that the entire revolution of feminism and even Mishkav Zahu in our society is a fantastic development for humanity. Humanity. That's how he started. It's acceptable. It's part of society. It's always been there. Not a hang up. And how do you finish? Fantastic development. Corrupt from beginning to the very end. And I'll tell you why it's corrupt. What has he done with this law? These words of the Holy Torah, which is Chamurot Sheba Chamurot Sheba Chamurot. He's cooled it all down. It's part of life. We have to get used to it. It's a good development. Even when he said it's forbidden, the act, but only the act, he's brought it down from being something. And made it something which is as insignificant as possible. You know what Rashi says about Amalek? Amalek cooled us down. Rashi compares it to Ambati Rotachat. We are boiling bath when we came out from Egypt. Amalek jumped in. He, was, he got burnt, but he cooled it down for others. This is what the chief minister, the Spanish and Portuguese Jewish congregation, oldest congregations in the resettlement in the British Isles, can be mechadish to us in northwest London in the heart of the Orthodox community. That's his aim. He wants to cool all of us down. It's not so bad. I haven't yet finished the quote from him. That which he said, that this has been part of humanity, it's false. It's only been part of depraved societies. The ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, I don't want to go into too much detail of what sort of lives depraved, depraved, They lived a life of debauchery, removed from any sense of humanity. The Roman Caesars they proclaimed themselves God, people had to worship them. They committed all sorts of heinous crimes. The Torah says, when it starts off the Pasha of the Arayot, you think the Torah doesn't know about it? You think the Torah doesn't know what these depraved countries do? The Torah is warning us. Do not do like them. Do not copy them. They're depraved. Let us look what the Torah requires from the Goyim to do. The Torah doesn't require much from them. They only have seven laws. 
שבע מצוות בני נוח. These are the basic laws of humanity and common decency. Not to murder, not to steal, not to commit adultery, to set up law courts, These are basic laws. What does it mean adultery for a goy? For a Jew there's about 25 forbidden relationships. How many forbidden relationships is there for a goy? The Rambam tells us. There are six laws. There's incest. He's not allowed to be with his mother, his sister from his maternal side, and the wife of his father, his stepmother. That's three. The fourth one is adultery, Eshet Ish, someone else's wife. The fifth one is Zachu, Mishkav Zachu, what we're dealing with. And the sixth one is Behema, to be with an animal. Those are the six laws that a goy is required to keep, which is considered basic to humanity. According to the Rambam. I quote, the Torah has very little to say about it. Even as far as the Torah itself is concerned, the act itself is rejected and nowhere can it be found to be permitted situation. But everything else around the act is completely our construction. This is clearly untrue. The Shochanor Siman Chaf Sif Aleph in Eben Ezer writes, Habal Echad Mikol Arayot O Shechibek Person who caressed any one of the forbidden relationships in the Torah. O Nashak O Kist V'nei Nebekiruv Basar O had any type of pleasure through actual feelings, feeling that person. How is it okay? It's chayab malkut. It's like eating pork. Chayab malkut. Shukhanoch in Eben Ezer Simen Chav Dalet. Lo nechshidu Yisrael ala zachu. The Jewish nation, we're not suspected to do this sin. In these generations, where there are many people who are parutz, we should refrain from being together in the same room with another male, alone, secluded. And he says, it's only the act which is forbidden. Everything else is its own construction. Lies. False. Next. The Torah does not have much to say about it. There's plenty the Torah has to say about it. Let me read you out. With your permission, I would like to read you out the words of Tuatenu Akedosha, Black 
on white. After it lists all the arayot The Torah says the following words. Don't defile yourself with all these sins. Because with all these sins, the nations who I'm sending forth from this country, from Israel, have defiled themselves. The land has become defiled and the land has spat out its inhabitants. And should keep my laws and shouldn't do any of these abominations. Because all these abominations, the dwellers of the land who were living here before you did, and they defiled the land. Anyone who does from any one of these abominations, his soul will be cut off from his people. You should keep my law. That you should not do any of these great abominations which was done before you. You should not defile yourself with it. I am the Lord your God. Is that? Is that nothing? Are those words nothing? Does Rabbi Dweck not have them in his Chumash? If a person, he does any of these abominations, the Torah says four times, not once, not twice, four times, the land will spit you out. The Holy Land of Israel cannot be defiled by these abominations. Peg himself says, Kalut bala olam, Rabozaria ve gibar yod shrihu dame mushmitata aretz. And here comes the greatest siluf. You know, I sometimes think to myself, Rabbi Dweck said in his opening words that he's thought for years and years and years before he gave this talk. Probably he meant to fit in so much nonsense in one talk, you had to think so long about it. I'm going to tell you now the biggest siluf of the whole talk and maybe which has been said the last 50 years. I'm quoting. The word to Ava does not mean an abomination. It means something that is repelled. Something which is not welcome. The Torah is not saying a moral statement on this issue. The way we feel about it, whether natural or unnatural, acceptable or not acceptable, is all our own determination. It is not different from any other provision in the Torah of the like level. Then he goes on to say, if you've got any hang-ups about this subject, hang it at the door, don't hang it on the Torah. False. Lies. He can't rewrite the Torah. He doesn't have that authority, even though he's the chief minister. The 
the word Tu'eva, from the earliest commentaries to the latest ones, including the translation in the English Bible, is abomination. It means something which is disgusting, something to be abhorred and hateful in the eyes of Hashem. Proof. Rashi, in Parshat Ha'azinu, Pasuk says, Bezarim yakni'uhu beto'evot yakhisuhu. They have caused a Kadushbok to be zealous through false worship. Bezarim yakni'uhu. Beto'evot yakhisuhu. They have angered him with their abominations. Says Rashi Akadosh. The Maasim Teuvim Kemishkav Zachu. With their disgusting deeds. For example, Mishkav Zachu. That's the example Rashi gives. If you want to know an example, what is called Beto Evot. And the Ramban says. It's despicable. <coughs> Rabbi Drek said in his talk, it never says it's despicable to Hashem. It doesn't say to Avat Hashem. To Eva. Not to Avat Hashem. It's a toiva. I don't mean toiva to Hashem. He's forgotten the Rashi. Betoivot yachisu who? They have angered Hashem. Says Rashi be Mishkav Zachu. Down to the Heintzige Poskim. The God Lado. Zichon Levrocha Moshe Feinstein. And Moshe was the acknowledged God Lador in the whole of America. The Kana Rabbanim, the Poskim. And Moshe was not known to be a Machmi, he was a Mako. Let us look where Moshe writes. Chelek Dalet or Achaim Simon Kuftet Vav. He writes it to a person who was next to the Mishka of Zachu and he asked him for chizuk for the future. Veshit haidia de chome isu de skila ve karet ve gam se nikra to eva ve hu mechata imam gunim be yoter. It's one of the most disgraceful things. And Moshe says at the end, It's the biggest disgrace to his whole family. Rabbi Dweck has disgraced the holy family of Hacham Rabbi Vadi is turning in his grave now. The Torah Tamima writes, Loshen to Eva More Ashikutz Zuhama Venivul. Vekaina, vekaina. If I'll mention everyone who speaks about it, Yichlea Zeman Vehem Alo Yichlu. We'll be here to Shavuot. Ad Khan, Bechilul HaTorah. Akshav, he went further.
He wasn't happy to, to rewrite the Torah. He now has to rewrite the Talmud and to debase the Chachmea Talmud. Quote, The Talmud also has very little to say of it. The Talmud also got very little to say about this topic. He only found one place in the Talmud which speaks about this topic. The Gemara Nedarim Dafnun Aleph Amud Aleph. It's story Rebbe and Baal Kapara. I don't want to go into the whole story. But in brief, Rebbe was making a wedding for his grandchild. And Rebbe was very serious. Because he knew he was upholding the whole world. And if he would let himself go, it would bring calamity to the world. Baka Para used to try and cheer him up, to bring a smile to his face. In the midst of the wedding, Baka Para turned around to Rebbe and he asked him, Toeva Mahi, what's the word Toeva mean? The Gemara says, Rebbe gave answers, but Kapara did not accept his answers. So Rebbe said to Baka you tell me what it means. So he said, Toeva Taba, Toeva is Toe Ataba. That's what the Gemara says. This is now Rabbi Dweck speaking. After making fun of the great Rabbeinu HaKadosh, And saying that Bakapa thought the Rebbe was losing his soul by not smiling. He then goes and says the following about Bakapara. I'm ashamed to say it in the holy place, but I have to tell you his words verbatim. Bakapa was in the middle of the wedding. And of course, what did he start speaking about? Homosexual acts and sex. And by the way, what does Toyaba mean? Quote. What does he think? What sort of wedding was this? Things that had mixed dancing, men kissing ladies, belly dancers. We're talking about Kedoshe Elyon. This is a rabbi? This is low. Lowest of the low. And then he goes on to his explanation of the Gemara. Listen to his words. Quote.
came out at the end of the learning of this Gemara. That so Eva does not even mean what Rabbi Dweck says it means. Rabbi Dweck says it means something to be repelled. Quote, and Bar Kappa has brought it down even lower and says that it's only something slightly deviant. You heard that? Rabbi Dweck is a machina. But Kapol is a makel. He's brought down even lower. He's taken the teeth out of it. That was his words. He's taken the teeth out of it. It helped. A boy said, are you listening? Is there anything wrong with what, what, what he said? Can you think of anything wrong? Anything shocking? Let me tell you who Rebbe was. And who was Bar Kapara. Rebbe was called Rabbeinu HaKadosh, a holy rabbi. The Gemara says, Miyamav lo echnis yado mitachat tiburo. He never put his hands below his belly, in the low parts of his body. That's why he was called Rabbeinu HaKadosh, a holy rabbi. Rebbe was Torah Abdullah b'makom echad, the greatest rabbi of his generation. The time of the Sanhedrin. The 70 greatest rabbis were living then in Tiberia. Rebbe was the Rosh Beddin. Nasi of Am Yisrael. Our prince, Mizera Amalucha of David Amelech. The Gemara says in Sof Sota, we should make Rebbe Batla Navavi Yadchet. Before Rebbe died, the Gemara Kitubo of Kufdalet says, Zakaf Esem Etzbo Tab Lemala Ve'ama. Yagati Batora Be'ese Etzbo Tab Ve'lo Neiti Me'olam Aze Afilu Ketzba Ketana. The Gemara says there, when Rebbe died, They gave a spade him. They gave a spade him. Eulogies for thirty days, ben bayom, ben balayla, day and night. For thirty days, they gave eulogies, and then for the following eleven months. Till the end of 12 months, they gave a spade in, either by day or by night, every single day. Who do you know nowadays is eulogized for a whole year? That's how great Rabbi Nakadosh was. It doesn't know who we're talking about. Baka Para, we mention his name every day. Tane Baka Para. He was the greatest of his Talmidim. When Rebbe was ill, the Hachamim told to Baka Para, Zil Aimbe, go and see how Rebbe is doing. And he saw Rebbe was nifted and he came back and he said the famous words Nitzhuereli mitam sukim binasha on Kodesh. The Malachim have won, and the Holy Ark has been taken captive. And now I'll tell you what the Gemara does say. What's Pshat in the Gemara in the Darim? 
So can Moshe. Moshe Faisen says, what was the question about Kapara? Bar Kapara Rebbe didn't know what Teva means. The greatest of the great. He didn't know what every child knows learns in Cheda. Bar Kapara asked, Yes, it says four times after all the arayot, the word toeva. But in addition to those four times, in addition to those four times, the Torah calls Mishkav Zahu individually a toeva. Both in Achre and in Kedoshim. In Achir, the Torah says, Ben Zachal, who is Yishkav Mishkei Be'isha, Toeva Hi. And Kedoshim, Ve'isha, she Yishkav Zachal, Mishkei Be'isha, Toeva Sushne. Bot Yumatu, the man ban. Dehainu. Even though all the Arayot is Toeva four times over, the Toeva of all the Arayot, which has to be mentioned specifically, is Mishkav Zachu. Asba Kapara. So what's the Pshat? Why? Toe Ataba. You're going away from the natural order of things. You're going away from the normal order of humanity. Toeataba. And now I'll tell you another Gemara, which conveniently Rabbi Zweck did not quote. The Gemara Sanhedrin Pei Bet HaModalev says on the Pasuk in Malachi Bagda Yehuda the Toeva Nesta Be Yisrael Be Yerushalayim Ki Chilel Yehuda Kodesh Hashem Ashaev Ubaal Bat El Necha Zog the Gemara Bagda Yehuda What does it mean? Yehuda was treacherous. Zu Abu Dazara. He's treacherous. He's a boget. Turned away from his husband, went to another wife. Bagda Yehuda. Betoeva Nesta Bisayel Bishalayim Zok the Gemara. What is the Toeva which was done? Zemishkav Zahu. Shinema Toeva. Zok the Ben Yoyada on this Gemara. Hacham Yosef Hayim, Zichon Bracha, the Ben Ishai. Why is it my pick Mishkav Zachu? It's not the only case which is written Toeva. So he says, Toeva is written by Avodah Zara. Avodah Zara is already written. Bagde Yehuda, Avot Zara. I will say it's written by Machalot Asot also to Eva, but there it's only written as a kolel. The only sin, says Hacham Yosef Hayim, where to Eva is written individually by that sin, not as a Dabal kolel, it's Mishkav Zacho. What is the punishment for this person? Says the Pasuk. Yachet Adonai Leisha Sheya Asena Eve Ona Meole Yaakov Umagish Minchala Shem Sebaot May God cut off that person from the tents of Jacob and from bringing a sacrifice to our holy God. Says the Gemara. What does it mean, Eve Ona Beole Yaakov? Im Tamid Chachamu 
לא יהיה ער בחכמים ועונה בתלמידים. If this person who's acting or propagating משכב זכור is a תלמיד חכם, we strip him, strip him. He should have no ear amongst the rabbis. They should not listen to his voice. He should not have any hashpo of the Talmidim. Umagish mincha b'elohei l'ashem sebakot. Im kohenu lo yelo ben magish mincha. If he's a kohen, we strip him. of his prerogative and privilege to bring sacrifices. A person who indulges himself in these acts and debases himself or propagates these acts is not worthy of our respect. Now we come to the final part of the talk where Rabbi Dweck then went and debased his audience and all of us. You should all be insulted. Listen to what he said. And I'm telling you, quote, that we tolerate loads, loads of prohibitions that are worse than this without batting an eye. But this we can't handle. And the only reason why we can't handle it is the recital, not the Torah. You don't hear another thing about it, but that's it. Unless you are prepared to act in the same way to people who speak Lashon Ara, or people Mechalel Shabbat, shall we talk about the level of sexual prohibition which is running rampant on a daily basis by every Jewish person in society today. Every Jewish person is running rampant. Who are we kidding? Everyone is so holier than thou. You don't see how one can be attracted more often than not because you have continued, convinced yourself you're not attracted to it. Usually there's something wrong with you. You hear? If you're not attracted to men, there's something wrong with you, according to Rabbi Dweck. There's a serious problem. You like to pick and choose. I'm carrying on quoting, by the way. You know how many people you should not put up to the toy if you make that type of scrutiny? You can't make a minyan. You won't be able to read the Torah. It helps. We're all sinners. There won't be a minyan. There seems to be more than a minyan over here. Shall we start asking whose wife goes to the mikvah and what their sexual history is? It is entirely, entirely so sight, nothing to do with the Torah. There's nothing else which is prohibited in terms of Mishkav Zahwe except the act. But it's no difference to anyone else. Nobody thinks about that. It is precisely the same punishment to drive around on Shabbat. Exactly the same, according to Rabbi Dweck. Do you not feel ashamed for a rabbi, a rabbi to speak to you like that? We're all sinners. Look at our sexual histories. We won't have a minion. Has he gone up his rocker? Let me carry on. Not yet finished. I'm telling you, you don't want to start searching into your sexual history. Aim by chain Shamet. There are plenty of skeletons in everyone's closet, so let's not be on a high horse. I'm insulted. And you should be insulted. <coughs> Is this how we speak to the congregation? 
Luke Yishai Novi. And he said, Ki am to mace of a time, Manochi Yoshev. The talk am to mace of a time, Manochi Yoshev. Yishai chapter above. I don't have the book here, I'll quote it by heart. When he said those words, when he debased the holy nation, and he said those words, Amongst the people who have impure lips, I dwell. Hashem sent the Malach to him with a coal, a burning coal. And he touched the coal to his mouth and he burnt his mouth. And the Malach said, Now that your mouth has got burnt and you understand what you have done wrong, your sin is forgiven. Dr. Rashi. Zograshi Kadosh. Mepnei shamu del tzuri al Yisrael. Because he spoke bad about the Jewish nation, and he called them am to mesev a time. Am a kashboch malach retzots pesha amad del tzuri al banai. Kashboch said, "Burn the mouth." Of the one who speaks bad about my people. What right does he have? To speak bad about the Am Kodesh. Moshe Rabbeinu. When he said. The Jewish nation won't believe in me. Because Boko made his hand leprous. How dare. A person. A rabbi. A leader. Debase us. Holy nation, such a way. I'll tell you what his motives are. I'll tell you why. And I read this in the book by Rabbi Abraham Tversky. Rabbi Tversky writes, he deals with drug addicts. He says when he sees these young 16, 17 year olds on drugs, they come to him. He says to them the question, he said, what, what, in your house, where do you put the rubbish? So they said, of course, we put it in the rubbish bin. So he said, so he asked them, so why do you put rubbish inside you? He said, 90% of children, they start crying. And they say, because we felt we were rubbish. We didn't have any value for ourselves. We felt we were trash. He wants to make the Jewish nation feel they're rubbish. If they're rubbish, they can do anything. Shomu Shamaim Azot. Very clever. It's a very clever man, Rabbi Dweik. Very clever. What do we say every morning when we wake up? Who are we? What are we? What are we?
Manu manu fanecha, al manu bila botin, no kola gibum kain fanecha, we're like nothing. And she Hashem kalu ayu. Hachamim kibli madan, bonim kibli asked chomasim tov mechain fanecha, matar dam de bimahin ke kolab. And what way are we elevated from an animal? Aval! Anachna amacha, we are your people. The neighbor itecha, the children of your covenant. The neighbor Abraham waavecha, she nishbat alo behar moria, the children of Abraham, your beloved. Zela Yitzchak Akedecha, the seed of Yitzchak, the one who sacrificed himself. Adat Yaakov Bincha Bechorecha, we are the congregation of your son, firstborn son Jacob. That's who we are. We can achieve. We can raise ourselves up. We can lift ourselves up. We have Zechut Avot. As Rabbi Desler explained, we have the zakut of the avot, we have the purity of the avot in our genes. That's how Rabbi speaks to his congregation, not speaks down to them, speaks up to them. Elevates them. Raises them. A boy sigh. We're not animals. We're B'nai Avraham, Yitzchak, we're Yaakov. We're not descended from monkeys. We're descended from Kedosh Elion, and we have inherited their purity, their greatness. Every one of us, without any exceptions, Bnei Tzion Aikarim Hamsulaim Bapaz. You're precious. Bnei Tzion Aikarim. You are golden. Hamsulaim Bapaz. And now I come to the conclusion. All this is not new. Enko Chadash Ta Chadash Ramesh. Throughout the Jewish history, there have been those who deviate from the Torah. Whether it's Sedokim, Baitusim, Karaim, all the reformers, conservative, liberal, and the ilk. But they're not dangerous because we know where we stand and we know where they stand. When is it dangerous? When you have someone who comes in front of you with two hats. He's got a hat of an orthodox and a hat of a reform. On the outside, he's an orthodox. His mouth spouts reform. Where we had this before an Anglo jury, we've had it before an Anglo jury, Louis Jacob. Louis Jacob. You know what happened? 50 years ago, I'll tell you some Jewish history, Anglo Jewish history. I was a young boy, and I remember very well the backlash of this. There was a man called Louis Jacob. He was brought up in Manchester. He went to Manchester Yeshiva seven years. He got a rabbinical diploma for Manchester Yeshiva. He then went on to Gates at Koyal. He was considered one of the most promising Tabadei Chachomim in England at that time. He then came to London and he worked together with Rabbi Munk in Munk's Shul. After that, he went to Manchester with Rabbi Manchester. He came back to London. Eventually, he became vice principal of Jews College. And then the trouble started. He started writing books of heresy. He started writing 
the Torah is not from Shemaim. The Torah is inspired by God, but it's not the Word of God. It was found, these books were read, but then the principal of, of, of Jewish College, Rabbi Epstein, he showed it to the London Beddin Dayanim. Abisha Grunfeld, Zichon Nebrocha, Moshe Swift, Zichon Nebrocha, and Arleib Grosna, Zichon Nebrocha. They, in turn, showed it to the then chief rabbi of England, the British Commonwealth. Harav Yisrael Brody, Zichon Nebrocha. Yisrael Brody took action straight away. He told him, don't think you'll ever become principal of Jews College. You have no chance. He didn't demote him, but he said, I'm not promoting you. He resigned from Jews College. He was asked to become a rabbi in the New West End Synagogue in town. But to become a rabbi in the United Synagogue, you need the permission of the chief rabbi. The chief rabbi, Rabbi Israel Brody, did not give him permission. The community revolted against the chief rabbi and accepted him as, a, as his, their rabbi against the chief rabbi. Rabbi Israel Brody, he told the council of the community that they have to resign. And he appointed a caretaker council. The council were furious. They wanted this rabbi, which the chief rabbi had not allowed them. They went and broke away and they went and made another community. Rabbi Saul Brody was not a yeshiva man. He never learned in yeshiva. He learned in Jews College. But he stood up for the truth. The truth that we all know. The truth that we imbibe in us with our mother's milk. He wasn't persuaded. The head of the Anglo-Jewish com com community resigned over this. The grandson of Lord Swatherling, Montague, he resigned because of it. The chief rabbi wasn't persuaded. He wasn't swerved. It was so Brody, he didn't have any children, but his legacy lives on till this very day. Can you imagine? If he had not made a stand that time, Louis Jacob might have become chief rabbi of England. And I want as a mark of respect, the Rav is so brody. The Chron Levrocha, who didn't have any children, but Siftotav Dovavod Bakeva. We should all stand up in his honor now to show respect for a rabbi who stood up in the anger of Jewish community and was not swerved neither to the right nor to the left in the honor and the glory of the Torah. You can sit down now. And the rest is all history. Rabbi Jacob took off his orthodox hat, he became a sorority, and the and it's everything and, and the line has become clear. The demarcation is made. A boy sign. Rabbi Dweck is another Louis Jacob. It's not only this talk. I've heard subsequent talks. And he's even more poisonous than Louis Jacob. And I'll tell you why. Louis Jacob, he said explicitly where he stood. This rabbi, he pontificates pious words. In this talk he said, I believe the Torah is min as if it's subject to any debate. Hazak Baruch to him, he believes that. In the next talk, Torah and Science, he said, I believe that 
Every single word of the Torah is dictated by Hashem. Chazak Baruch. And then what does he do? He rewrites the script. And he gives his own interpretations. You know why he can give his own interpretations? I'll tell you why he said so in the talk. It's not my own chidush. Because the Rambam writes, listen to this, the Rambam writes, when the Torah says, Eine Hashem, it doesn't mean figuratively. It doesn't mean literally. When the Torah says, Yad Hashem, it doesn't mean literally. Hashem doesn't have a hand, doesn't have eyes. It's a bedimian. It's a matter of expression. So Rabbi Dweck said, if the Raman can do it, I can also do that. So he took the whole theory of evolution, which the scientists are saying, and he rewrote in five talks, he said, he gave five talks to explain what's written in the Torah and Maaseh Bereshit to fit in with the theory of evolution. Because the scientists a hundred percent accurate every time they say something, of course. They never say theories, never change their mind. There's no change in the scientific theories at all. And medical theories as well. Doctors never make mistakes, they never change their mind. Medical science is an exact science. Have you heard that? That's Rabbi Dweck. He will rewrite the Torah to fit in with the science. Why? Because the Rambam says, we can say the Torah is not literal. So Rabbi Dweck is able to decide what part of the Torah is not to be taken literally and can be reread. It's a Toeva. Toeva! And now I want to give my final statement to the press. I call upon the London Bestin and Diane Ehrentroy as a senior rabbi of the United Synagogue to come out with an unequivocable, unambiguous statement of their views in this matter. It was reported in the Jewish Chronicle last week that he spoke to a spokesman from the London Beth Din that Rabbi Dweck had chosen to remove his shoe from circulation. I just want to make it correct. He never chose to, he was told to. But that's what the so spokesman from the London Beth Din said. He carried on and said as follows, and I quote, the matter is one that principally concerns the S&P community and its Dayanim, who have indicated that they are dealing with the issue. End of quote. Does anyone buy that? Does this matter deal principally with the London, with the Spanish and Portuguese community? Does anyone buy that in this room? Not at all. Thank you. And I'll tell you why. Rabbi Dweck has been saying these theories, not in the Spanish and Portuguese community. He's saying them in the congregation in Hendon of Rabbi Kimchi. He is invited to die in Antroy's synagogue. On Shavuot night, he is invited to the flagship synagogue, the United Synagogue in St. John's Wood, to speak and say what he thinks about Kabbalah Torah. So we don't buy that. This spokesman from the land of Beth Din, I hope the Jewish Chronicle will go back to them and take up this matter further with them. We don't buy that. This matter is to do with the whole of Anglo Jewry. And I want to go further in my statement and say 
that even if this matter is only to do with the S&P community, Dain, Chanoich, Er, and Troy, and the London Bethlehem have no compunction to say their views in public about a Dain from another Bethlehem. I don't know if you still remember, it's only four and a half short years ago, when a Dain in northwest London was publicly stripped of being a dying and from any public office in a Giludat signed by Dayan Chanoch Aaron Troy, Menachem Geli and Jonas and Abraham. Even though they say in their Giludat that that body had agreed to set up a special bed to investigate their allegations of one of their own Rabbanim. That wasn't enough for Dayan Aaron Troy and London Beth did. No. They didn't say then, it's a matter to do with that body. Their Dianim will deal with it. Even though the Dianim said they will deal with it. And they write it, they, they told him they're going to deal with it. It wasn't enough for them. They stripped him and then shamed him in public till this very day. They have no compunction. So we, Anglo Jewry, the rank and file of Anglo Jewry, Request of the London Bethlehem to say their views publicly in this matter. And if, in their view, Rabbi Joseph Dweck is not an Orthodox rabbi, doesn't spout Orthodox views, his hat, his Orthodox hat, should be removed from him. That's all I have to say tonight. Sorry it's taking me so long to say it. I want to end off by speaking to the congregation. We are Amisol Kadoshin. We are the holy nation. These days a Kadushbok chose us. To be his Mamlechet Kohanim Begoy Kadosh, a nation of priests and a holy nation. We're all preparing ourselves for the holy day. A boy sign. Don't be so gullible. Don't be so naive. Remember who you are. What's our mission in life? What Hashem expects of us? Es passt nicht. Es passt nicht. It's not worthy of us to listen to these sort of words. It doesn't befit us. I wish all the Kal Kadosh, together with the ladies, all the children, all be zocher be'ez Hashem to bonim b'bnei bonim oskim b'tuav mitzvot. All be zocher to see Zera Kodesh coming out from us to strengthen our kilos our Kodesh. When we say tonight about Olam Avtanu, to realize how much Hakadosh Baruch Hu loves us. Chem la gedolah b'tzeh hamal talenu. Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us His holy Torah. Holy Torah. Kem chayenu v'orich yamenu. This is our life. The length of our days. We say tonight, Aleinu Shabbat. The words that our holy fathers went to the stake. Were burnt to the stake saying these words on their lips. Shilosam chelkeinu kegoye arasot. ולא שמענו כי משפחות האדמה שלא שם חלקנו כהם בגואלנו ככל המונם. Our portion is not their portion and our lot is not their lot. We have a higher mission in life. 
he had sung with his words, which had dvorim my yotzim in the lev, may they be nichnasim the lev. May we be mitzai ourselves. Shavuot, we go twice to the mikveh. Once before Yom Tov, and once in the morning. Because Kabbalah Satoira has to be B'Kedush of the The Seder now is, there will be one song. Is it here? Okay. Elian? Yeah. Okay, there will be one song which Alem Shabek will be sing together. And then afterwards we'll say the Kaddish de Rabbanan. Then there'll be a five minute break before I read so we can gather ourselves together and we pray out of it. But simple.